on? It's Ash here. Coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. How y'all doing? I'm doing great. About to travel uh, tomorrow morning, but I wanted to record a video for you guys really quickly. I want to talk about every champion that I've ever maxed out in the game. And uh, quick disclaimer, because I feel like now... I need to have a disclaimer in every video. I feel like if we really established that track record here on the channel, guys. Uh, a lot of these champions, especially when you look at the gear, they're kind of muling artifacts. The truth is, I have a lot of maxed out champions on this account, but uh, almost, no, I shouldn't say, I shouldn't say almost half of them. I would say the majority of them, I just maxed out to make YouTube videos on, right? So like just to make guides on these champions. So I don't use most of them. I use about half of these champions. Uh, so I'm not going to judge them based on how much I use them, but you will see some weird, you know, artifacts on some of these champions. Uh, don't read too much into it. I will let you guys know how often I use these champions as I go through them. Instead of starting with the, uh, you know, the fully empowered void legendaries and stuff like that, I want to actually start at the bottom here of my maxed out fully uh, six star champions and talk about the uh, common. We, we actually maxed out a couple common champions. I think two. Yes, two. Uh, and then kind of go from there. Now, I don't want this video to be uh, an hour long or 45 minutes long. Uh, if you want to see a follow-up where I really talk in depth about all these champions, you know, where I use each one, how I use each one, what their skills are, uh, let me know and I'm happy to make a two-hour video for you guys. Otherwise, the truth be told, I actually recorded the uh, just the first like 10 champions already and I did get into that much level of detail 25 minutes later i had 10 out of my you know 80 champions done and i'm like okay it's really gonna be three hours i gotta start over and what i want to do is letter grade all these champions as i go through them so it's more gonna be about grading versus doing you know proper reviews on all these champions so death hound my first common champion i mean uh <laughs> We'll give, how can I even judge these commons, right? It's more of just to have fun with these champions. We will give him a C because for a common, you know, it's probably number two or three. Uh, we do have Sister Militant. She's a common as well, guys. And I, I built Sister Militant in a stun set because I don't have it on her anymore, but because she only has one ability. Have you ever seen a one ability champion before? Well, I guess if you've done any food farming, right? Uh, attacks all enemies. There it is. So in a stun set, she's got an 18% chance at stunning uh, every single turn. Bad news is, is uh, we can't even, uh, <laughs> we can't do much with it. That's not enough to justify building this champion. But I will give her, just for unique in funness on her, I'll give her another, I guess, C. It's hard to uh, even, like I said, rank or grade these champions. Uh, and you can't ascend them either. You can't ascend common champions. So we can't get the banner on them or anything like that. All right, next up is going to be, uh, it's going to be Armager. So Armager, will give him an A. He is, in my mind, the best uncommon inside the entire game i have him in destroy here because i use him against scarab king or at least i used to uh he has turn meter on the a1 and a hard hitting a2 on a two turn cooldown based on enemy max hp great for spider great for scarab king great for an enemy max hp defense based champion easy to keep alive for a com for an uncommon champion so we'll give him an a armager uh saurus will give him a i don't know i guess it's a b minus b minus an AoE attack on the A1, an AoE attack on the A2, great for campaign farming. Soros is a cheap, uncommon campaign farmer who can get the job done in around 7 or 8 seconds. Uh, we have Shield Guard. I'm going to give Shield Guard a B+. He is my personal favorite uncommon. Sorry, Cold Brew and all the other Armager lovers out there. Sure, Armager in a vacuum is better, but Shield Guard is so much fun, man. He's got the uh, fill turn meter on his A2, and he can just be a massive kind of going again and again and again, kind of like the Energizer Bunny. I will give him a B plus. Very, very fun champion in lifesteal gear as I have on him right now. I will give Sniper an uncommon champion with a two-time hitter and an AoE times two. We'll give her a C plus. Really... You know, Sniper's not a champion that I really get excited about anymore, but I did max her out and I did do a fun video covering her. Outlaw Monk, again, way back in the day when Poison was something to really, really be, you know, to vie after, uh, be sought after for a clan boss. He was used in the in the kind of the beginning of the game. Uh, recommended to players to use if you want two poisons on the target, but he is so, so fragile. Uh, 694 base defense, 12k HP. He's uh, he's pretty bad, really. I'll give him a D because you can only really use him on early level clan boss and then he's just, you know, worthless. Then again, he is only an uncommon, but we'll give him a D. I'm not a big fan anymore. Back again two, three years ago, not too bad, you know? I mean, bad, but not too bad. Uh, Berserker. 
Berserker, I actually use in a bunch of secret rooms. He's got a, uh, a two-time hitter. Uh, he has, he just deals some decent damage. I have him in a stun set because basically anybody with an AoE that's a rare champion spirit for the uh, Doom Tower hard secret room that you need spirit affinity champions. Uh, I put him on stun sets. I try to just CC down the enemy team and it works for me. I was able to clear all of the rare rooms in Doom Tower hard just using kind of that strategy, right? AoEs with uh, stuns. So I'll give Berserker a... Uh, we'll give him a B minus for a rare champion in a in a vacuum. He's kind of niche. A lot of these champions are going to be kind of niche. Marques is an incredibly hard hitting crush the weak ability. Uh, that extra damage really comes in the form of an extra hit on enemies with weaken. She can hit really really hard in the arena. She is kind of a one dimensional champion. Overall, give her a C plus. Uh, again, really not blown away by this champion. But if you're looking for a lot of damage out of a rare champion, you can't find a better arena nuker rare. Certainly spirit affinity than Marques. I did a guide on her as well if you guys want to check it out uh corporal and cadaver not a great champion but i do use him because of that aura defense in all battles i put him in a shield set as well uh actually apparently not anymore he's in a destroy set <laughs> uh okay uh i have no idea again muling artifacts here but i do use corporal and cadaver in uh doom tower rooms uh in secret rooms excuse me again spirit affinity there's a spirit affinity only floor you can see i have a bunch of spirit affinity champions maxed out for that reason i'll give him a c minus not an incredible champion but not trash either. A lot of base HP. I had him in a shield set for a while. Uh, we have Soulbound Boyer. Now, I love Soulbound. Uh, she is also Soulbond, not Bound, Ash. Uh, we have a stun set on Soulbond, and we do. We actually don't have Fearsome Presence as a mastery, but either way, she's an AoE on her A1, and she has really good A2 and A3 abilities, fully depleting targets, turn meter on the A3, for example. I will give her a B plus. She's one of my favorite rare champions out there in the game. Uh, Hell Freak, I'm going to give a D. I really don't like Hell Freak. I did max him out. A lot of speed on this champion, which is nice. Uh, but he has, you know, attack one target and swap HP with an enemy. Granted, extra turn. You know, that's, that's not enough to get me excited about a champion. Uh, when you look at his kit, you're like, okay, not that bad. But then when you actually play him, you're like, okay, pretty bad champion. Uh, Apothecary. Give Apothecary an A. Uh, great heal on a two-turn cooldown. We have the speed boost. We have the increased speed as well. We have a great defense in Dungeon Aura. Uh, really, my my third favorite rare champion in the game, personally. I think it's not even that close in terms of the top three rares. Just my own opinion. Uh, okay, Greybeard. Greybeard will give a C+. Plus. He is, or C. He's campaign farmable. He has an AoE freeze. Not too bad to get a, what, 40% chance freeze on an AoE on a three-turn cooldown from a rare champion. Damage based on defense. It has defense and dungeons by 30%. So a great aura. Uh, some CC built in there as well. And easy to keep alive. I'll give him a C. Maybe even a C+. Plus. Uh, he's campaign farmable as well. I think I already mentioned that. Galek will give him a B. I'm just going to give all the starters a B, I guess. Uh, Elhane a B. I guess Aethel I'll give an A. Ju you know, just ranking on uh, compared to other rare champions. And I'll give Kale an A as well. Really, all four of the starters, you can make a strong case. They're four of the better rares in the game, which is nice. I personally prefer Kale and Aethel. No hate against Galek or Elhane as well. Uh, Diabolist is my, I guess, my second favorite uh, campaign farmable rare in the game. Very, very fast champion. Uh, 110 base speed. You get her from stage 12 in the campaign, guys. She has an increased speed on all allies with an AoE attack, and she has a decreased turn meter in full turn meter on her A3 positive charge ability. I think she's a great speed and turn meter kind of control champion that is accessible to everybody in the game. Uh, I will give her a, uh, a B+. Plus. Hospitaler, I'll give her an F. She's an awful, awful, awful champion. I only maxed her so I could have Harrier's companion champion for that video. Uh, Frozen Banshee, I will give her an A minus. She used to be probably an A plus. When she was introduced to the game, she was the first and only champion to have poison sensitivity. Now it is on, you know, probably about half a dozen, maybe even closer to 10 other champions in the game. So a little bit less exclusive, but she's still an incredible champion for clan boss, especially. Uh, Grave Chill Killer is a great champion to have on the same team as Frozen Banshee. Uh, good synergy there, but in a vacuum, she's not, not amazing. I will give her a uh, C. Uh, Avir the Alchmage. I mentioned this uh, on Avir on a previous video, but truly... Um, the litmus test for me is I pulled him on my free to play and I didn't max him out. I didn't think it was worth using, you know, all the food to get him to six stars. So I'm going to give him a C plus. He's not a trash champion, but I don't think he's necessarily worth maxing anymore. I think there's just so many good epics out there. 
uh, that now I just have the higher barrier of, you know, what it's going to take for me to invest all the food and energy and resources into maxing a champion. Uh, so Avir is not bad, but I don't think he's necessarily a game changer. We have Warman. I'll give her a B, uh, a great force affinity debuffer, and she is campaign farmable as well. Can put out a lot of damage. So B there. Coltar is an A+. Plus. I think Coltar is the best rare champion in the game, uh, mainly because of this Heartseeker ability. Just absolutely, unbelievably game-changing. Definitely Definitely justifies building uh, more than one Coltar. We have Renegade, who's a great reset the uh, abilities champion. I'll give her an A minus. She's a little bit niche, but if you don't have Kaimar, or even if you do sometimes, Renegade can definitely help you out, especially on speed teams. Ironically, she's a rare champion who's used probably more in the end game than in the early game. You don't see that a lot. Uh, Doom Screech, I will give a B plus. This A2 is amazing. Turn meter filled by 30% in increased defense on all allies on a rare champion. Three turn cooldown with a lot of base HP. 20k, easy to keep alive. Uh, Fellhound, I will give an A, an A. Best campaign farmer in the game, man. Best campaign farmer in the game is a rare champion. I have to give him an A. Uh, we have Bellower. I'll give Bellower an A minus. He's my fourth favorite rare champion. Uh, not that any of you guys asked, <laughs> but uh, he's got an AoE on every ability. He has the weak version of a lot of debuffs, but he brings a lot to the table, can be a great CC champion in a stun set as well. As a matter of fact, I do have him in a stun set right now. Uh, Painkeeper, we will give her Painkeeper. You can see she's half naked. I don't really use her anymore. Uh, but for clan boss on killable team, she's great. I will give her a, a B minus. She's, uh, she's a good champion, but I would say... Um, uh, you know, just not my favorite, but, but not bad, you know, decent heal on the A2 as well. We have Seducer. Seducer, I will give a B plus to. Seducer's not bad. He's a defense space champion with an AOE decrease attack, weak version, but nice to have that damage mitigation. Also, it's the weak version of increased defense and block debuffs for two turns on a four turn cooldown. So I think he's actually a really solid debuffer. Does kind of taper off into the later mid and in late game in raid. Harrier F. Reliquary Tender. We got Reliquary Tender. <laughs> Here we are! <laughs> Reliquary Tender, guys. Uh, she is my number two. I think she's absolutely amazing. She has a cleanse, continuous heal, and a revival. Uh, also decreased attack on her A1. She's just my favorite support champion out of all the rares, even above Apothecary. I might be in the minority there, but I just really, really love Relic Tender. We have Dilgal. I will give Dilgal a B-. I like him a little bit more than Avir the Alchemage. He has a two-time hitter with decreased accuracy uh, and a three-time hitter with decreased defense on his A3. He can put out a lot of damage. I'll give him a... What did I already grade him? All right. Draconis. We'll give Draconis a B-. minus. He's got some, you know, mild heals in his kit. He also has a shield on all allies, 15% of this champion's max HP. Kind of a weak shield, but you do get a shield on three-turn cooldown, which is rare for a rare. Gear Grind, I'm going to give a B to, man. This guy, I really like. He's a simple kit, right? Continuous heal on the A1, a uh, a heal, AoE on the A2, and then he has a revival as well, 50% HP, 50% turn meter on the A3. Not many good rare revivers out there. I think Gear Grinders are solid heal and reviver to have on your squad, and and I have him in a shield set to get more utility out of this champion because he has a lot of base HP as well. Uh, we have Kazar Depart. I'll give him an A-. minus. One of my favorite rares. I would definitely put him in the top 10. He has an AoE on the A2. He has an AoE on the A3 with a weak version of decreased defense and increased accuracy on all allies. This is on a three-turn cooldown, as is his A2. So a lot of AoE damage coming in from Kazard and increased accuracy. He was the second, he was the first champion to have increased accuracy on an AoE on all allies. The first champion, of course, Stagnite vis-a-vis -vis his past. Uh, pinpoint accuracy dagger i will give a c plus i like dagger a lot she's a she's a semi-dependable de uh, decreased defense champion however she's very fragile very very tough to keep alive and it's only a 75 percent chance of decreased defense you really want 100 percent, especially now in the game where it feels like there are a dime a dozen uh decreased defense champions uh scrapper i'll give a uh c minus two He's good for Scarab King. He's really bad everywhere else. And you can make the case Armager is even better than him for Scarab King anyway. So a more accessible champion, an uncommon versus a void rare champion. Uh, Ashwalker, A plus, baby. A plus. I love this champion. In all sincerity, Ashwalker, I will give him a C. Uh, speed and all battles by 12. 
not bad for a rare. You know, speed all battle uh, aura are rare to find, again, for rares. We have an AoE weak version of weaken, and then we have a stun on a, in a decreased turn meter of all enemies by 10% if the attack is critical. You know what? I take it back. I'll give, I'm being too hard just because he has my name. I'll give him a B minus. I think he's a, uh, a, a pretty decent champion. I'm not sure he justifies uh, six starring though. All right, Virgis, I will give an A minus. Aegis is an insane ability, and then he's so tough to kill because of this passive wind. He got a massive buff, defense in all dungeons too, by 33%. He got a massive buff about a year or two ago, and since then, I think a lot of people sleep on the power of Virgis. We have Deathless. Deathless, I will give a D. I'm really, really not impressed with Deathless. This uh, ability, Grim Revenge, is cool. Damage uh, is is scales according to how many dead allies are on the team. But even if everybody is dead, it's still not dealing like... <laughs> the type of damage it should deal if everybody's dead is like, this is my last hope, kill everybody. I'm talking like Sky Piercer type damage from Baron. And it's nothing close to that. I'm just not a massive fan of Deathless. And who wants to have everybody on your team dead to get advantage of this ability anyway? I did put out a video on Deathless if you guys want to go ahead and check it out. Cool, unique champion, similar to Kytus. And I know you guys on Deathless and Kytus, I'll give Kytus a, a, a C-. minus. I know you guys are going to be like, but Ash, if all these things happen, they could be some of the hardest hitters out there in the game. But like, who's going to build a team? Who really uses Deathless and Kytus as their main arena nukers, right? Uh, damage increases according to the amount of HP this champion has lost. So if he has like, and this is a secret skill. So if he has like one HP, he can really nuke with this A3 on a four turn cooldown. Again, for me, sure, you can get damage out of him. I did in the video that I put out with him. I'm sure plenty of other YouTube videos out there as well, but I give them both Ds. I'm just not a fan of these champions. Uh, Vrask, they're interesting, they're different, but they're not, they're unique, but they're not great in my opinion. Vrask, I will give a B plus. If you're looking for heals, Look no further, man. He's one of the best healers inside the entire game. Certainly top 10 healer inside the entire game. Probably a top three epic healer in the game as well. I mean, just very, very solid champion. Also has defense and dungeons, 33%. Again, very good aura on this champion. Uh, Steel Skull, I do feel like has gotten power crept just a little bit. Champions like Urigrim come into the game and just bring in a little bit more to the table, honestly. Uh, does have poison on his A1. Does have a cleanse and a heal on the A2. And then increased defense and a heal on the A3. Still very good for uh, clan boss and for support for faction wars. You can get a lot of value out of Steel Skull. So I'll give him a B. Uh, still a good champion, but he used to be like one of the best of the best in the game. If any OG players are out there, remember when Steel Skull was just god tier. Uh, I would like to see this aura change to defense and all battles by 25%. That way, at least you can run him as an aura lead. Uh, similar to like Tyrell and Sandlash Survivor and Sepulcher Sentinel inside uh, clan boss. Uh, next up is going to be Galcut, who I just put out a guide on Galcut. Uh, I'm going to give him a B. Man, he can deal a lot of damage with this uh, Brutal Battering on the A2, and he has a Bomb on the A3. Really cool champion, insane multipliers. I think this starts at like 6.5 multiplier on the A2. Uh, can be an Arena Nuker or a Campaign Farmer. We'll give him a B. Uh, Occult Brawler, still one of the best Poison Layer epics out there inside the game. Uh, for that alone, we'll give him a B-. minus. He's a little bit one-dimensional, and they've added so many other Poisoners into the game. None quite as good in terms of epics. Obviously, champions like Calvalax and stuff are better than him uh, in terms of Poison damage, but none as good for epics in terms of sheer Poison damage, so I still give him a B- minus uh, for that you know, for that particular, uh, you know, benefit that he brings to your team. Uh, Fenax is a B plus, B plus champion here, guys. He has a very hard hitting A1, one of the hardest hitting A1s in the game. He has a block active skills or block buffs on his A2, and then he lands decreased speed and defense on his A3 as well. Big multipliers, brings a lot to the table. Uh, great debuffer for against bosses as well. Uh, just an overall very good champion. You can make the case he even belongs as an A- minus or an A champion. He's that good. All right, there's still a million champions to get to here, guys. So Deacon Armstrong, the Deke, will give Deacon an A. He's one of the better epic champions in the game. Decreased defense. He has an extra turn after filling and depleting turn meters. What a beast. Also speed or in all battles. I run him in a stun set as well. He didn't get a basically this on a two-turn cooldown with the extra turns, right? So I'll give him an A. Overall great champion. Sandlash Survivor. I will give her an A as well. Great aura, as we mentioned earlier. She has a great passive, providing uh, more support, ally protect, block damage on a champion uh, whenever their HP drops below 
about 50%. That's on a four turn cooldown. And then extending the duration of all ally buffs while decreasing enemy buffs is a great ability to have. So another A champion. Burgot the Malformed, I'll give him a C minus. He has this canister heal, but frankly, it's uh, really can't even hold the candle to champions like Vogoth's uh, heal passive. So overall, I mean, you get a provoke, you get a little continuous heal. I'm not a massive fan. You could even say D plus maybe on this champion, but he's not absolute trash. You can get some value out of the HP based champion on Rock Breaker. Uh, Rock Breaker, I love this little fella. I'll give him a B because he has an AOE provoke, 100% land rate on a three turn cooldown, counterattack on himself, improves his own defense on the A1, and can completely block out damage on his Iron Hide ability. Without Rock Breaker, I would never have beaten, well, eventually I guess I would have, but I wouldn't have beaten Dwarf uh, Faction Wars. So I'll give the little fella a, uh, a B. Plus. Uh, we have Stagnite A. Plus. One of my favorite epic champions in the game. Decrease attack and defense on the same ability. Decrease speed on the A1. A lot of speed. A lot of HP. A lot of defense. Can put out some damage as well. Just an overall amazing champion. My first A plus of the video. Uh, our second behind Cold Heart. Uh, Vala. We'll give Vala a C. Uh, C plus maybe. Not a bad champion. She's removing all shield on enemies, uh, attacks all enemies, has only a 50% chance of placing decreased defense, and then she has a shield on herself, a increased defense on herself as well. A turn meter fail by 30%. She's kind of a selfish champion. She's all about herself, but she can do some pretty cool things. So I'll give her a C, C plus maybe. Uh, Vogoth, I will give an A. I love Vogoth, man. One of the best healers inside the entire game. Put him right up there with Vrask. Better than Vrask, maybe, depending on where you're using him, of course. Off of this passive here. Also has a uh, AoE Provoke and an a Leech passive as well. Vogoth, one of my favorite champs out there. A. Uh, Tayrell, I'm going to give him an A, man. A lot of people say that Tayrell has fallen off. Of course, he has an AoE decreased defense. It's on a four turn, not a three turn cooldown, which we're used to now. But he's bringing enough to the table, which makes me still give him an A overall. One of the better epics in the game. Defense based, turn meter on the A3. We have decreased attack on the A1. And we have defense in all battles aura. Uh, Gorgorab, I will give a B to. A lot of people probably give Gorgorab an A, A+. Plus. People, man, you guys, you love Gorgorab. You love Gorgorab. Uh, he's got speed in arena battles, great arena uh, lead, especially in kind of the mid-game, just, uh, you know, campaign farming, right? really, right? Revives any or all dead allies with 25% HP, then heals all allies by 25%. It's not a great revival, but it is an AoE revival. There's not that many of them out there. Of course, they are adding more and more champions. That's why I kind of downgraded him from maybe A to a B this year. He does have turn meter fail, increased attack on his A2. Uh, so basically everything you need from an arena support champion. Overall, a really fun champion, really good champion. Allure, I'll give her an A. Uh, I mean, I have two copies of Allure. Again, Coltar, Allure, there's not that many champions that I built two of. Allure is one of them. Uh, great control. Amazing control. One of the best controls in the game, especially for Fire Knight, but even in Doom Tower bosses. On the Psychic Whip ability, three times 25% chance uh, on each hit of decreasing target's turn meter. I have them basically just built with a lot of speed and a lot of accuracy on my Allures. I will give Allure. What did I give her? An A, right? Seeker will give Seeker an A too. He's one of the best champions out there, epic-wise, in the game. Have him in Stalwart right now. I'm not sure where I used, last used speed uh, seeker probably in some sort of a uh, a Batman comp. Uh, we have a turn meter fill by 30%, increase attack and grants an extra turn uh, leading into more provokes off of his A1 and what a great passive. Heals his champion by 20% and plays an increased defense buff on all allies when hit with a critical hit. I used this guy as an arena booster for so long and then I moved over to, uh, to Batman comps with him. Also great on a go second team in the arena. So another A grade for, uh, for Seeker. Jareg! I will give Jareg an, uh... I'll give him a B plus, A minus. Uh, great champion, man. Great aura, HP in all battles, 33%. That's like legendary-esque aura. We have continuous heal on an ally for one turn. Whenever an ally loses 20% of their max HP in one hit, we also have ally protect and increased defense and decreased attack on his A1. Oh, screw it. I'll give him an A minus. This guy's a beast, man. He is a beast. Same thing with Grizzled Yarrow, man. A minus again, guys. He's got a heal reduction on his A1. AoE, uh, increased defense, block debuffs, three turn cooldown, and then 
an AOE decrease attack, 100% chance at landing that. Defense-based champion, just an overall very underrated and good champion in Grizzled Jarl. Miscreated Monster, I'll give him an A as well. We have an AOE stun, one of the better shields in the game when there's a lot of enemies alive because the damage is scales off of, or the shield scales off of his damage dealt. We also have Ally Protect. We also have Continuous Heals on himself. We also have a great passive with Fears whenever anybody with Ally Protect is attacked. This guy's just a, a beast. He's a monster. Uh, great for Spider. Great for Ice Golem. Good, it can be used in the arena. It can be used really anywhere that you want a lot of support on your squad. I love me some miscreated monster. Used to be my channel intro for those of you old school uh, viewers out there. Ultimate Galek. There are two types of people in this world. Some who love Ultimate Galek, some who hate him. I, unfortunately, am the latter. We'll give Ultimate Galek a C-. So the good news on this champion is if you have no other HP burner... You know, you can do a lot worse, right? He's got an HP burn on one enemy on the A2, provided he's under an increased attack uh, on the A3. HP burn on all enemies, again, provided he's under increased attack. Uh, so, you know, not a trash champion, but there's better burners out there. Uh, again, we'll give him a C. Uh, Dark Hell Hain will give her a B plus insane damage off this Death Majesty. Also, uh, AoE decreased speed on that ability. 75% uh, chance of that landing, but really instant activation whenever an ally receives a freeze of that A2 is insane. She's also stripping away freezes. She's one of my favorite champions out there. Uh, she's also a daily login reward champion. We'll give her a, uh, a B plus. Uh, Lordly Legionary, give him a, uh, a D. Just having a two-hitter with extra hits, potentially, if they're under a 100% heal reduction. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I just don't. Not enough for me to get excited. You know, reflect damage for Fire Knight, sure, sure. But, you know, give me Apothecary over him for Fire Knight. Give me Cold Heart instead, right? Of course, give me a lure. I don't think he's a good champion. I'll give him a D. He's my least favorite daily login reward champion by far. Give me Tainix any day over Lurely Legionary. I'm a hater. Uh, Archmage Helmet, A+. Plus. Uh, insane damage out of this dude. I just did a video on him as a nuker. Check it out. So much fun. Uh, but really, just a great control champion. AoE stun here, 75% chance on the A2. Uh, decent multipliers, if I didn't mention it already. Uh, increased speed, crit rate, and crit damage on a three-turn cooldown. Also, uh, immune to turn meter effects. Speed and arena, okay, whatever there. But a lot of base speed, good base stats. Uh, overall, great champion. The second Doom Tower normal uh, secret room champion is Akop the Seared. We'll give him a... Uh, Give him a B. Give him a B. He's kind of niche. He's good against like stage 24 of Spider when the affinity matchup is correct. So going against Spirit Affinity is great. He has an AoE HP burn, but it's only 20% chance. The good news is the chance of the placing that debuff increases by 20% for each enemy alive. So you do need to make sure there's a lot of enemies alive, uh, which is the case against Spider. So one of the better Spider burners, uh, but overall, not one of my favorite HP burners in the game. Uh, but not a trash champion, can definitely be useful. Uh, Kaden, I will give Kaden a B+. Plus. I think Kaden is a very, very underrated champion out there. Has a provoke on the A1, an AoE decrease attack, and a revive two random allies with increased defense, 50% HP. That's enough to keep them alive. I really like this revival. It's on a four-turn cooldown. A dual revival, two allies on a four-turn cooldown is very, very good. Decrease attack, 100% land rate on a three-turn cooldown. Maybe even, a, you know, A- minus on Kaden. A- minus on Kaden. He's very, very good. Uh, Armina. I like Armina. She's very squishy, very low base defense, uh, but I have her. I run her in Relentless. Uh, you can have some fun with her. Put her with other uh, stun champions. Fills those champions turn meter by 10% each time an enemy receives a stun. So put her on the same team as, say, Archmage Helmet or Scylla Drakes and uh, just an awesome synergy with this champion. Also has decreased defense uh, and stealing turn meter and can put out a, a lot of damage. So I like Armina. I will give her an, a B plus. Ugo A plus, one of my favorite debuffers in the game. Game, block buffs and decrease defense on a three turn cooldown a mini cleanse here and a heal uh on the a3 just an incredible incredible champion and as i've said before my best champions most of them are in relentless gear not all but you know a lot of them so uh just getting more turns out of ugo is always a good thing more cleanses more heals more decreased defense more block buffs uh claude beast feeder claude is a an a minus 
Very good champion, guys. Uh, very fast champion. 110 base. Look at those base stats. They're really solid. Uh, when look at the skills, he's naked right now. I'm going to do a guide on him eventually. Uh, but look at this the kit here. We have a shield on the A2, three-turn cooldown. Then we have increased speed and accuracy on a uh, three-turn cooldown as well on the A3. Heals out with lowest HP by 10% of their max HP at the start of this champion's turn. Not a bad champion. A minus, B plus territory. Taragi the Frog! I'm gonna give Frogman an A minus. Another very, very good and underrated epic champion. Has the poisons that he's dealing off of the A3. We have shields, we have ally protect, we have reflect damage on the A3. And then we have a provoke on the A2. Overall, just an incredibly good champion. Dekstra attack as well in the A1. Man, what a good champion Taragi the Frog is. Hatatsu, again, another A. I'll give them both A's. A Taragi, A Hatatsu. Hatatsu's very, very good, guys. Has a leech on A1, defense-based champion. Decrease attack on the A2, on the AoE. 75% chance, uh, actually 80% chance of that landing, 85 with Sniper Mastery, and then we have increased defense, continuous heal on a three-turn cooldown on the A3. We got increased defense, we got decreased attack, Got continuous heals. We got leech. We've got removing debuffs from himself. Got defense in all battles. This guy's very, very, very good. Uh, expect a guide coming on him soon. Siege Hulk. I'll give Siege Hulk a B. Uh, I really like Siege Hulk. I'm tempted to go even higher. Insane damage out of this champion and decreased defense. So a decreased defense champion, three turn cooldown uh, with increased attack and crit damage and crit rate all built into his kit for himself. Very hard hitting Siege Breaker ability. This guy is a nuker and a half. Very fragile though. 760 base uh, defense, 15k base HP. Venomage, I will give a B plus. Uh, Venomage, really good because of this A1 primarily. There's a lot of good parts of Venomage's kit. Uh, but each hit has a 35% chance make it 50 when booked of activating two poison debuffs can be a lot of damage onto the clan boss with Venomage or any boss for that matter Dark Kale will give an A plus Dark Kill is nasty. Very, very good. Uh, Three-time hitter with instant activation of poison or HP burn on the A1. Uh, on the A2, AoE decrease uh, attack with 100% land rate on a three-turn cooldown. Each critical hit also has a 75, make it 100% chance of increasing the duration of all debuffs on the target by one turn. We also have 100% chance when booked to placing three poisons and poison sensitivity on the target for two turns. Wow. Also, a decreased crit rate by 15% when there are two or more poisons on the target. Dark Kill, very, very good. Canelia, I'll give her a B plus, a niche champion, but very good. She can solo almost anything. I have her here running in a toxic set. She can solo Scarab King. Check out the last video that I did on Canelia. Very good champion. B plus, maybe even A minus on this champion. Uh, and can also be kind of an arena setup champion uh, with a AoE sleep on the A2. All right, Vildrax. I'll give this guy a C plus. I know some people like him an AOE hex, so a dependable hex layer for your team, and then an AOE chance to increase the duration of it all enemy debuffs by one turn. Uh, putting skills on cooldown if they're under hex. Overall, maybe a B minus. Not a bad hex champion, but I don't think he's like a power player out there. Let me know if you disagree with me. I know a lot of you guys like Vildrax just based on the comments. Uh, Fenisil, he's been power crept, man. He's been power crept. I will give him a C plus. Oak Skin is a good ability. Increased defense and a heal on a three turn cooldown. But not a lot of damage off of Wither on a five turn cooldown. No, ne no reason for that. And then we have a uh, a whopping whatever it is, uh, 30 or 40% chance of placing a sleep on the A1. Okay, cool. Uh, at very, uh, He needs a little buff, I feel like. A little buff on Thanosil. He used to be, like, way back when I started playing, it's like, oh, Thanosil, yeah, you got increased defense and a heal. Uh, but now you need a little bit more. You need to bring a little bit more to the table. Sinesha, though, she still is a uh, a goat, right? We'll give her a A minus. AoE on the A1. Uh, great in a stun set. Great heal on the A2. Better heal on the A3. Great heals out of Sinesha with some control uh, or even damage, depending on how you want to build her. Uh, so A minus there. Skull Crusher will give an A2. Uh, he's one of the only three counterattack champions in the game. Also has uh, Ally Protect. Uh, great for clan boss, but really great for anywhere you need a counterattack, a kind of a tank on your team. Uh, we have Shatterbones. We'll give a B plus to. I just built him. I haven't really used him a ton yet. Uh, but expect a guide coming in the next month or two. We have a three-time hitter with turn meter on the A2. We have a decreased speed on our enemies with fill turn meter on the A3. Great for turn meter control, B+. Husk, uh, A-, one of the better 
uh, enemy max HP champions out there in the game. Despair can do a ton of damage. Uh, really don't regret building him, especially now uh, because of Hydra Clan Boss. He's one of the best champions out there for damage. And he has a stun, too. A stun on his enemy max HP ability. Very, very good champion. Often slept on. Not so much. Not as much anymore. Soul Drinker. I'll give Soul Drinker a B. He's a bomb champion, but one of the most fun bomb champions out there. He has decreased bomb debuff detonation on his A2. On his A3, we are landing a attack all enemies two times. Each hit has a 100% chance of placing a bomb that detonates after three turns. So again, decreased uh, bomb detonation on the A1 and the A2 as well. And when he dies, he's placing two bombs on each enemy when he dies. So not bad. He can deal some decent damage even without the bombs. Uh, maybe I was a little bit high on him with that grade because bombs just aren't meta, but I like Soul Drinker. Uh, Nizana. Nizana on Dark Lance attacks all enemies. A AoE on the A1 can be a good control champion as ally protect on the A2 and has another AoE with decreased attack on the A3. 75% chance on a three turn cooldown. Nizana is a very, very good support champion, HP based champion, even though I, if I remember correctly, yeah, her damage is based off attack, which is weird. Uh, but overall, I'll give her a, um, I don't know, B plus. Zargala. I'll give Zargala a B plus, A minus. Uh, can deal some serious damage. A great dependable decreased defense champion. Uh, it is on a four turn cooldown, which kind of sucks. Uh, that's the only kind of knock against Zargala. Four turn cooldowns. Nowadays, you almost want everything three turn cooldown. Uh, but either way, you can get extra A3s out of this A2 if you can kill an enemy. We'll give her an A minus. Infernal Baroness. An AoE with a heal on the A1. She has a veil on the A3. And then she has another AoE. I put her in a stun set on the A2 with decreased attack. I put her in a stun set. She helped me a lot to get through Demon Spawn Faction Wars. Because an AoE attack, AoE attack, and then a veil on herself. A uh, perfect veil on, on not, excuse me, not herself, an ally. My bad. On a four turn cooldown, it lasts for three turns. So, Infernal Baroness, I will give her a B. I think it's a solid champion. It's not a game changer, but a solid champion. Uh, Doom Priest, an A, because of this passive, man. Heals all allies uh, and removes a random debuff at the start of this champion's turn. You can see I built her in Relentless Set uh, in as fast as I could get her given the gear that I have, uh, you know, had available. So, Doom Priest, just amazing. Relic Keeper, oh man. We'll give him a. Uh, <laughs> Grant's extra turn of the target is killed. You can do some fun things with the A1, but overall, not a great champion. We'll give him a D. Uh, Basilisk. Love Basilisk, man. Give him a B. Give him a B. Very hard-hitting A1. 3.6 multiplier, I want to say, off the top of my head. Uh, increased attack on this champion for two turns if the attack is critical. Really, you can just A1, A1, A1. Guaranteed stun on the A2 as well, though. Uh, just a good damage dealer, right? If you're looking for raw damage, I also use him as in a lizard man secret room in Doom Tower. We have Romero. Uh, did I give him a... Yeah, I did. A B. Romero. Uh, C. He's not, an, he's not a trash champion. He's a companion champion with Juliana. Uh, he does have a three-time hitter if Juliana is on the same team. But he's not awful. He has a shield uh, on all allies. Increased defense on himself. He has continuous heal on all allies with a steal a buff from a random enemy. And then he has another continuous heal on the ally with the lowest HP on the A1. Damage based on defense. Good for faction wars. Good for early game support. I'll give him a C. Maybe C-. minus. Uh, Kalia. D. I hate Kalia, man. For a champion that has a base attack of almost 1,600, she does not put out much damage at all. Uh, an AoE here. We have a three time at random here with HP burn on a four turn cooldown. Uh, doesn't excite me. Uh, I'm really just not a fan of Kalia. I regret building her, so a D. Uh, we have Chancellor Yasmin. We'll give Chancellor Yasmin a uh, C plus, B, mi B minus, excuse me. We have a, uh, a buff removal on the A3. We have a heal on a two turn cooldown. A really good heal, uh, but she is kind of... I don't know. She's not dealing any damage. She is placing sleep potentially on enemies who have buff re buffs removed on a four turn cooldown. But, you know, she's not bringing a ton to the table other than a heal and removing debuffs, you know. Uh, so maybe a C plus B minus. Uh, Mausoleum Mage still one of the best in the game out there. I'm going to give Mausoleum Mage, get ready for it, an A plus. Decreased speed on the A1. On the A2, increased crit rate, increased crit uh, defense, excuse me, and block debuffs, and then a full cleanse and a heal and turn meter fill on the A3. Are you kidding me? That's a lot for one champion to be bringing to the table. Unbelievable. Rear Guard Sergeant will give her a B+. Plus. She has decreased defense on her A1, decreased attack on her A2, ally protect and continuous heal on her A3, HP in all battles by 33%, uh, but it's only for force. 
if this was just get rid of the word force here, I would put her A minus. Uh, because I want to run her as an or lead in clan boss, and I just can't do it, right? So, uh, or give her a defense uh, aura, then she would be on the same level to me as a Sandlashed or a Tayrell in terms of the utility they provide. Uh, but overall, still a very, very good champion. Amazing in Faction Wars. Uh, Ursan Ironhide will give him a C plus, maybe a B minus. I don't, I don't dislike the bear, man. I like the bear. Uh, an AOE decrease attack. 100% chance land rate, and then turn meter on the passive, which is not bad to have at all, and then also uh, increase the cooldown of a random one of the target skills uh, on the A1 at a 50% chance. Not a game changer, but he is defense based, so he's tough to kill, and uh, I like the control, the turn meter on the passive. So again, maybe we'll give him a, a, a C plus, a B minus. Uh, Retrodrath will give her a A, an A. Uh, very, very good champion. Great revival. Uh, fills turn meter. Perfect veil. Uh, very good uh, single target revival. Uh, and then a great healer. Uh, all this passive synergy between veil and perfect veil. Every Heals every time they get a turn. Extra resistance. Just a very, very good champion with decreased attack also on the A1. One of my favorite support champions added last year. We get Geo. We'll give Geo a A+, plus, man. It's all about this passive, you know? We're talking about uh, deflecting damage, mitigating damage, and dealing a lot of damage uh, with this champion. Overall, you can use him in so many different areas. Hydra Clan boss against, uh, you know, Spider, against half the Doom Tower bosses. Just an incredible champion, even with the change to his passive. Uh, Mordecai will give him a B plus. One of the better burners in the game. Certainly the best burner out there, in my opinion, or right there, up there. Uh, certainly epic, best epic burner for Spider 25. So a great Spider 25 champion. Don't mind me messing with my face over here. Uh, Ryan the Conjurer. I'll give Ryan a A minus. Very good champion. Uh, has a very uh, Madam Ceres esque A three here, removing all buffs from all enemies. Has a weaken as well, uh, and then has a revival. So not a bad champion. We're not placing decreased defense and weaken. While re after removing all buffs, but you can still use her in the arena as a debuffer and also serving some utility with a revival. So A- minus on Ryan. Tanix Hate Flower, good for uh, Hydra Clan boss. Uh, good for healing on the A1. Good for decreased speed on the A2. I think that uh, Tanix is probably a B-. minus. Uh, she's not the strongest champion, but you can get some utility out of her, right? Uh, Barote the Blood Soaked. We'll give him a C+. Plus. I don't hate this champion, actually. He's doing something different on each of his hits on each of his abilities. So the first hit does something, decrease attack. Second hit does something, decrease defense. Actually built him for a secret room in Doom Tower. I think I just basically built him in a... I didn't even care about his damage. I just built him with a lot of HP and put him in a shield set. 93k HP just to try to keep the rest of the team alive. I should have built him out with some crit rate. Uh, but either way, I'll give him a C+. Plus. Uh, we have Crunch Kill Joy. I have not used him yet, so I'm not going to rank him. Uh, Attract the Wender and we'll give him a... Uh, who? B plus or A minus. Give him a give him an A minus. Uh, defense in all battles, great aura, great passive. We're getting heals and turn meter fill for freeze and HP burn on enemies. An AoE freeze or HP burn. And then we have block buffs and strengthen on a four turn cooldown. Great champion. Uh, Burringiri. We'll give Burringiri the big fella. We'll give him a B plus. We have an AoE stun here, 60% chance on a three turn cooldown. Not bad at all. Damage based on defense. We have a strengthen. We have a shield on all allies on the A3. Yeah, very, very good support champion. We also have the heals of champion by 50% or max HP whenever an ally or an enemy dies. So he's tough to kill as well. Pretty cool champion added to the game. We have Thylesia A-. minus. I really like Thylesia. She can put out a lot of damage, increase the duration of all debuffs on all enemies by one turn, and an AoE decreased defense. Essentially, we can keep this decreased defense and any other debuff for that matter up on all enemies at all times. A-. minus. Faceless. Single target nuker, man. Single target nuker. Ignoring shield and block damage on the A3. I don't know. I don't get out of bed anymore for single target nukers anymore. Uh, I'll give him a B minus. He deals a lot of damage, but he's a one dimensional uh, champion, you know? Uh, Broadmaw. I'm going to give Broadmaw shock the world and go A minus on this champion. 
He now has revived two random allies, 25% HP with block damage. So again, kind of like Caden, two allies now. It's not as strong as a revival, but he does have increased crit rate and increased speed on all allies with turn meter fill on the A2. We also have a great aura for faction wars on the A1 and a high chance, 45% chance of freeze on the A1. So maybe B plus, A minus territory. I put him maybe around the same kind of ranking as Caden. Uh, maybe a little bit lower just because his revival is not as good. But overall, after the buff, Brahma is actually pretty solid. Uh, Warcaster, I will say a B minus. An AoE block buffs. Nice to have, but it is 75% uh, land rate. We really want that at 100. Uh, we also have block damage on all allies for one turn. Not bad for faction wars. Uh, used to be good for some uncoalable comps, but there's better options out there now. So overall, we'll give him a B minus. Uh, just not really meta right now in the game. Uh, Cardinal. We'll give Cardinal a B. You know, still one of the craziest revivals for the arena. Boost their turn meter to max as opposed to fill their turn meter means they're going to guaranteed to go next, which is amazing. So if everybody dies in the arena, you use redemption and then everybody just goes, you know, they're all full turn meter and ready to rock. Uh, Silar. Silar is amazing. Expect a guy coming out on her soon as well. I've never done a guy on Silar. The control monster. I have her in a stun set, as you guys can see. She has an AoE on the A1 and the A2. Decreased accuracy and lead in leads, uh, legs, excuse me. Uh, I really, really like Silar. I'll give her an A. Uh, we have Light Sworn. Light Sworn is increased defense, revive on death on a four turn, and then decrease attack and decrease speed on one enemy. Uh, I'll give him a B. I think he's a B. This is not a bad ability on the A2. On the A1, decrease target's turn meter by 10%. Three-time hitter. Yeah, I'll give I'll give him a B, man. Maybe even a B plus. He has high base defense too, right? 1476. Not too shabby. I haven't used him in a while. Uh Basher. Give Basher an A minus, man. I like Basher a lot. A four-time hitter with block buffs on the A3. Uh, and then we have. Increase the cooldown of all target skills by two turns on the A2. It's kind of a mini, mini, mini warlord, right? He's a, not a bad champion. Umbral Enchantress, I love Umbral as well. I'm going to give her an A. Uh, Undying Evil is a provoke for two turns. She does lock herself out, but it's a great ability. AoE, defense-based champion. Also, AoE block buffs on a three-turn cooldown uh, for three turns. Very, very unique ability here. Uh, I think the only ability in the game that has block buffs up all the time on all enemies, provided you can land it. I'll give her an A. I love her. Gala Long Braids. Gala, I will give a B-. minus. I like her a little bit more than Faceless because she can proc an extra turn. Grace an extra turn of the champion has full HP. But other than that, she's just a very heavy damage dealing single target kind of arena-esque nuker uh she does have some seal, uh, shield synergy as well uh sky touch shaman aoe on the a1 with the heals more heals and more heals on the passive uh her retrodrath and vrask and vogoth i would say are the best healers in the epic category maybe even the best healers in the game you know there's not many legendary healers better than those champions uh but we have a great arena cleanse ability too on the a2 i'm gonna give sky touch shaman an a i think she's a tremendous champion inquisitor shamil i'll give him an a great for hydra clan boss really saw a lot more utility uh with the true fear cleanse on the uh on this champion right each critical hit whenever this ally receives a, a fear or true fear debuff from an enemy this skill will instantly remove the debuff and fill the allies turn meter by 15 percent so great damage dealer and great for uh hydra clan boss i have him in a toxic set as well because he's always con uh constantly counter attacking uh with this a1 all right madam saris another a plus yeah a plus one of my favorite epic champions out there. She's removing debuffs. Uh, she's stealing debuffs on the A2. She's removing them on the A3. And a great debuffer. Great passive. Shield on herself. You name it. She's got it. Tremendous champion. A+. Plus. Uh, Whisper. C-. minus. Uh, can deal a lot of damage. Kind of a cool kit. She was an Amazon Prime champion. You can grant extra turns if the target is under weakened and decreased defense. Kind of making a snowball effect into more damage. Uh, but, you know, over at the end of the day, 
She's just a damage dealer, another damage dealer, kind of like Tuak the Wanderer, who's actually better than Whisper, in my opinion. Uh, has a great aura, too, attacking all battles. Not great, but decent aura, attacking all battles by 22%. He does have an AoE with decreased speed in his kit as well, and he does a lot of damage with a stun on the A3. Also steals the target's turn meter if he has less than 50% HP. I do think that Tuak is underrated. I'll give him a B plus. He's a really solid nuker to have on your squad. Ursula the Mourner. Has this great Requiem ability. We're placing increased defense and strengthen on all allies on a five-turn cooldown. Also reviving them and filling their turn meters if they're dead. We also have increase and decrease attack on the same ability. We'll give Ursula the Mourner an A. Give her an A. Uh, Godseeker Aniri, another A. We have her in Relentless Gear as well. Maybe even A plus on this champion. We are uh, increasing duration of buffs on enemies, decreasing duration of uh, 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 buffs on allies. <laughs> Let me redo that one. Uh, decreased duration of buffs on enemies, increased duration of buffs on allies, and then she has two revivals, one with a reset of all their skills and another one built into her passive here. Very good champion. Get more value out of heals too. Uh, we have a Boro. I will give her a B, a B. Attack all enemies if the target is under four or more debuffs on the A1. Has decreased a defense as well. And then you have single target damage dealers with synergy on, on Veil. She can deal a lot of damage. Very good for faction wars. Uh, good for Hydra clan boss as well. A little bit niche though, in my opinion. So again, a B minus on a burrow. Maybe a B. Skimfos Consumed, I'll give him a B as well. I have a guide out on him if you guys want to check him out. Very cool champion. Transfers all debuffs from this champion to an enemy. And he soaks up all the attacks all enemies 100% chance of placing decreased attack after trans after attacking transfers all debuffs from all allies to himself and he throws them back on the enemies with the a3 so a very cool champion overall uh a what did i give him a b a b jenbo man he's a niche champion he's a damage dealer for faction wars damage dealer for anywhere but a great damage dealer who can ignore unkillable if he's under increased attack in the arena, I will give him a uh, an A minus, an A minus. I really like Jenbo the Dishonored. He can nuke, man. Eurogram A minus. Got a great heal, got a cleanse, and then he has two poisons and a continuous heal on all allies. Two poisons on enemies, continuous heal on allies, speed in all battles by 20%. I'll give him an A, A. I'll give him an A. Uh, Demitha. Demetha is a very cool unkillable comp champion. Three turn cooldown, block damage, and continuous heal. She also has increased the duration of all allied buffs by one turn, decreased the duration of all allied debuffs by one turn. So in a heal. Very good support champion. I'll give her an A. I think Urigrim and uh, Demetha were two of the better champions added all of last year, uh, including legendaries. Astrolith will give her a D. I really don't like Astrolith. We have exchange enemy HP. We have a bomb that cannot be resisted after one turn. Nice that it's on one turn, but man, I don't like her. I don't like her. I know some of you cra crazy weirdos do. I don't. Uh, D. She has a big buff, man. Septimus, A. I mean, Holy Sword is the hardest hitting enemy max HP ability. Single target, but he can kill the spider in like one shot, man. He's a monster. A monster of a champion, so A. Queen Ava. I'm going to give her... You guys know I've been hating on Ava lately quite a bit. Uh, I don't know. She needs more, guys. She needs more. She can be a good campaign farmer, a six, seven, eight second campaign farmer, but she's bested by Fellhound. So I'll give her a C. She's very one-dimensional in my opinion. Can be okay as like a nuker in, in Faction Wars, but I'm just not a massive fan of Queen Ava. Uh, Lord Shazar, I'll give him a B-. minus. He's a good champion, has the best speed aura in the game for the arena. Uh, he has a bomb on the A3. 100% chance of placing two bomb debuffs to detonate after two turns. Decreases the detonation cooldown by one turn if the attack is critical. That makes him a great bomb layer. But bombs, again, are just not meta. The nice thing is he has a great A2 that grants him an extra turn as well. So overall, he has a lot of potential. If bombs are meta, Lord Shazar is going to be one of the best champions out there. So a B-. minus but potentially an A if bombs are ever, you know, really meta and good in the game. Lysandra, A plus. Energi uh, speed aura, best in the game for all battles, tied. Uh, energize, an amazing ability, increase speed, turn meter fill, turn meter depletion, and then a full turn meter uh, depletion on the A2. She's just like the queen of speed control. Amazing champion. Martyr will give her an A. There's going to be a lot of A's in the legendaries, guys. We have increased defense, counterattack. 
on a three turn cooldown. And then we have a decrease attack and a provoke on a four turn cooldown. We also have uh, defense and all battles by 33%. I don't care what anybody says. Martyr is still insanely good in this game. Uh, Ghostborn, A, again, we have a decreased defense that cannot be resisted. Good multipliers, you can build them to be just an all out nuker if you don't care about the heal reduction. Just build them to nuke, 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 or the decreased defense on the A1, uh, which we don't really need. It's kind of redundant. We have it on the A3, granted a four turn cooldown. But he's the only champion that can land decreased defense on an AoE and not be resisted. You can build them to be nuker. You don't have to worry about accuracy. Valkyrie, A+. Plus. I mean, stand firm. That's all I have to say. Jealousy is great too, but stand firm. Counterattacking the best shield in the game. All right. Rick top the bolt. We'll give him a B. Plus. B plus. An AoE on the A1 that actually does a decent amount of damage. Good for Scarab King too. Can uh, decrease enemies max HP. And then we have one enemy three times. Each hit places a poison debuff on all enemies for two turns. Nice. Three poisons on all enemies. Uh, and then we have attack one enemy damage increases according to the amount, number of poisons on them. Uh, so great against bosses to get some extra damage out of that curse hold ability. Uh, Shamrock, we'll give him a B plus. I think he's underrated. Look at what he's doing. He's putting increased defense, increased speed on all allies. Uh, well, actually, increased defense on all allies. Increased speed on all allies with more than 50% HP. And then we have revive on death on all allies with and continuous heal with less than 50% uh, HP. Uh, bu -bu 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 on all those allies. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I was right there. Uncatchable. He got a buff uh, like a year ago, and he's been a lot better since then. AoE decreased speed with turn meter and a turn meter fill if their turn meter is below 50%. I don't like the qualifiers in this kit. I'm going to change it to a B. I do think he's underrated, though. Very fast champion, too. Base 111 speed. His base stats are just really solid all around. We have Suzerain Catan. Man, Suzerain. He has an AoE on the A1 decreased speed. An AoE on the A2 with weaken and decreased defense if weaken is not placed. I hate that, but it is what it is. And then on the A3, we're removing uh, shield block uh, da block damage and unkillable blast from all enemies, then attacks them. Another AoE uh, with heal reduction that cannot be blocked or resisted. I'm going to give Suzerain and This is a tough one, man. He's a tough one. I'm not the, the biggest fan that some people are of Suzerain, but I still acknowledge that he's a good champion, especially good for Hydra. I'll give him an A-. minus. Ah, uh, man, Nogdar the Headhunter. I am going to be the most biased person ever. People hate this dude. I love him. I'll give him an a, a B plus. So much fun in a frenzy set. One of the favorite videos I've ever put out on the channel is a Nogdar the Headhunter guide, guys. He can just AoE, 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 sacrifice more HP, fill his turn meter for more sacrificed HP, and he's like the Energizer Bunny who just kills everybody. Check out that video, guys. It's insane. Just go, uh, YouTube search or Google uh, Ash Nogdar the Headhunter in a, uh, in a frenzy set. Uh, wait, what, what happened here? Where did I go? Where did I go? So I'm going to give him a B+. Plus. Maybe I'm biased. Okay, I'm super biased, but whatever. I like him. I love him. Molly Tankard, an A plus. That's right. I said it. A plus. Rowdy Crowd. Turn meter fill whenever she's hit. Uh, turn meter of all allies when this champion is hit by a boss by 25%. That's on a one turn cooldown. That's insane passive, man. Also can revive. Has a revival. Also has a guaranteed provoke. 50% chance for two turns. And base stats are insane. A lot of defense, a lot of speed. Molly Tankard is a very, very, very good champion. A+. plus. Drockle the Gaunt, B. Uh, good shield ability here. Uh, increased attack, increased defense. Also places block damage on enemies with less than 30% HP. Shield here, places a shield. And uh, when it's removed, it heals them, heals allies. Stun, I believe, on the A1 as well. Not a bad champion, not a great champion. So B. Uh, Virgum Car B, a niche champion, but not trash. Removes uh, Provoke and another debuff from all enemies. Increased defense on all allies who have debuffs removed. Also a shield on all allies on that A2, all on a three turn cooldown. Not bad. Also has an AoE, removing buffs and placing heal reduction and decreased defense. Also immune to Provoke as well. Uh, Iron Brago, A+, plus, man. This guy's a monster. Can deal a ton of damage. Has increased defense for three turns. And has a stun debuff as well. Uh, has an AoE Provoke. Great for Clan Boss because of this passive. Increases the defense of all allies by 10% of this champion's defense. You build him with a lot of defense and he can be a monster. Look at this. 55-96. 
Not too bad. We're getting 500 plus, 550 extra defense on all allies walking into a battle. That's tremendous. Uh, we have Genzin. Genzin, I'll give him a B plus. He's like the Energizer Bunny of decreased defense champions. We're filling turn meter everywhere. Filling turn meter everywhere. Dealing some damage. Placing some debuffs. Triple hitter on the A1. He's a fun and cool champion. Uh, we got Rule the Hunt Master. I'm going to give him an A minus. Maybe B plus. He can nuke, man. He is my favorite Hex champion. Uh, extra hits on enemies under Hex, ignoring defense, depending on how many e enemies are under Hex. And then he has the Hex debuff and increased accuracy and perfect veil on himself, all on this A3 ability. Uh, I like that champion. He was also a fragment summon. Varl I have not used yet, but I'm not very, uh, not very uh, bullish on how good he's going to be. He looks kind of meh. Uh, I guess I can't click ratings and it brings me to the top of the screen. Why is it doing that? All right, Kyoku. A, my, A, A, the best tank in the game, potentially. We have this ability, ally protect and block damage on this champion for three turns and then grants an extra turn. Are you kidding me? A, what a tank. I have a guide on her as well. Rorik Wormbane, I'm not a fan of Rorik, man. I'm not a fan of Rorik. Uh, have a chance of stunning all enemies if we fully deplete Taurus turn meter on the A2, which is nice, but I'm going to give a, I don't know, I guess C minus, but I'm being kind. I kind of want to go D on this champion. I'm just not a big fan. Are you guys? Uh, Gameron. Very unique champion. Uh, an AoE attack with a buff spread. A buff spread after stealing. We haven't seen that before in the game. And also a very interesting uh, A3 you guys can read if you want to. I'm going to give him a B minus. I haven't, you know, the kit looks really cool. Haven't got a lot of utility out of him yet, though, so but I reserve the right to change my mind. Tatura Rhymehide. I'm going to give an A-. minus. Great champion. Increased defense, block, debuffs on a three-turn cooldown for two turns. Also, a perfect veil on all allies except this champion with a shield. Okay, A. A. Why did I say A-? minus? A. Tatura Rhymehide is a very, very, very good champion. Also has a reflect built in, to on the passive. Uh, we have Lord Champfort. I'm actually not a hater of Lord Champfort. I think he's a cool champion, a lot of base HP. We have an AoE decrease attack as well and decrease accuracy. That's 100% land rate, uh, not too bad. A pretty simple kit, decrease defense on the A1, but I think he's a very useful legacy champion in the game. We'll give him a B+. Uh, Biggin, AoE, 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 turn meter depletion, tons of damage, great accuracy aura, 90 in dungeons, what? Uh, Biggin. My first legendary I pulled that is random as my accuracy lead in every dungeon for the first like five months I played. Didn't even have to worry about, you know, getting accuracy banners and any of that baloney. Uh, give him an A. I really love Bingen. Another A for Draco Morph. We got tons of poisons on the A2, tons of damage on the A1, decreased defense and weaken on the A3. What else can you ask for? A. Kaimar, A+. Plus. Uh, Kaimar, in my opinion, I just put out another guide on him, updated guide. One of the best champions inside the entire game. Uh, Abyssal Gaze for the arena is insane as an opening move. And then Seal of Magic as well. Also an AoE poison on the A1. What else can I say about Kaimar? The king of speed runs, the king of arena, the king of everywhere, A+. Uh, Norag, I, uh, I, I'll give him a B. A B. We have an AoE block bus. Not bad, right? On a three-turn cooldown. I haven't uh, maxed him out fully yet. But that's a good ability. And then we have a passive, immune to stun, a freeze, sleep debuffs, and decreases damage allies receive that are under one or more buffs. Decreases the damage allies receive under no buffs by 25%. Great aura. Allied defense in dungeons by 40%. That's the best dungeon aura, I believe, in the game for defense. Could be wrong. I think it is, though. Uh, Rush God the Tower. I don't use him. I never have used him. Uh, not super meta right now, but good in uncertain, unkillable teams. I'll give him a... Uh, I guess a B minus for right now. Eleanor Rill, give her an A minus. Very good champion. She is placing uh placing poison debuff for two turns on all enemies, places a second poison if the attack is critical. So two poisons on a three-turn cooldown and deals all damage from poisons on all enemies instantly on the A3. A great speed run phenom, great damage dealer nuker to have on your squad. Altan. 
Uh, I think he's been power crept a little bit. Defense and all battle is still a great aura. Uh, he has a kind of a random revive and an ally on his a uh, on his passive, excuse me, and then increased defense uh, on all allies with a shield if the enemy is killed on the A2. Uh, also has decreased attack on the A1. Good for clan boss, good for boss battles, good all around. B plus A minus. Ignatius. A A A. Very good champion, defense-based, can deal a lot of damage. We get an AoE Provoke, 75% on the A2, and then we have an AoE HP Burn, 100%, that cannot be resisted on the A3. Defense in all battles on this defense-based champion. Uh, give him a big fat A. Hackhorn Smash Lord. Uh, I don't use this guy a lot, but he's he's good. He has a, a cleanse and block debuff for two turns on the A2, and then he has a sacrifice HP uh, nuke on the A3. It doesn't do a ton of damage. Can't be critical if I remember correctly. Uh, damage, yeah, it is always a normal hit. Uh, overall, give him a B. He's not my favorite cleanser in the game, but he's a reliable and, and, and solid one, right? Grohawk the Bloodied, another B minus. He got a big buff. He's stealing 100% turn meter on his A3. Now he's placing a uh, well, an AoE, excuse me. Each critical hit fills the champion's turn meter by 20%. I think that was predicated on them being on decrease, under decreased speed originally. Uh, now he does have decreased speed on his A1 as well. So kind of a cool uh, A2 ability here, kind of like life uh, lifeguard or whatever. Shield guard, my bad. Lifeguard? What, bro? Shield guard. It's been a long video. Sorry, guys. Uh, speed and done is by 24% as well. I'll give him a B-. minus. I like him. I have a soft spot for Grohawk the Bloodied. We have an ally attack, Lanicus the Chosen here. Uh, she has three random allies on a four-turn cooldown. Uh, also fills the turn meter of all allies by 30% on and increases the duration of all ally buffs. People forget that she's filling turn meter and increasing buff duration on her ally attack ability, which makes her very, very good and somewhat underrated, in my opinion, when we talk about other... I feel like most of the attention goes on on Necret and Creola and Longbeard, those ally attacks. I think that Lanicus is very good in her own right and unique as well. Foley will give a... So we'll give her a... Uh, Give her an A minus. Foley will give a uh, B plus. Great damage dealer, great arena nuker, right? Enemies killed by this kill cannot be revived on the sealed fate. Has good multipliers on it as well. And then we have four time hitter on the A2. A four time hitter on the A1. I forgot that he has four time on the A1 and A2. We'll give him an, an A instead, A minus or A. Uh, great for Fire Knight. Great for the arena. And then whenever he's placed a stun, freeze, sleep, or provoke, we're instantly removing that, heals him, and boosts his turn by 50%, which makes him even better for the arena, even in arena defense, right? Uh, Rotos the Lost Groom. Give him an A. I still think this guy is a, uh, a great nuker, right? I think he's a great nuker. He got a buff uh, a few months ago as well. Uh, what else do I have to say about him? I think he's a, he's just a really, really top tier single target uh, nuker in the game who brings something more than other single target nukers who are, I'm sure we're going to talk about a lot of them here. Saito, I'll give him a B. He doesn't deal as much damage as I was hoping, but he's still a good damage dealer and a good champion overall, especially in longer battles because we'll ignore 7.5% of enemy defense each time this champion attacks the same target enemy in consecutive attacks. Pretty cool ability, right? We have Syl the Dregs. Syl, baby, Syl. I'll uh, give her A+. Plus. You guys know why I love Syl, right? You know. I don't need to tell you. She's amazing. AoE stun, heals, revivals, uh, more heals, increased speed, decreased speed. I built two Syl the Dregs, and I don't regret it for a second. I love her. A+, plus, and I'm not just saying that. Uh, we have Narma the Returned. I'll give her a B. Good for Poison Synergy. Uh, debuffer for clan boss, healer for clan boss, kind of a clan boss specialist. We have three poisons and points of sensitivity on the toxic trance A3 ability. Elegaeus, Argaeus, something. Man, this guy sucks. <laughs> I don't like Elegaeus or Elega Elegaeus. I'm going to go with like the Greek version of it. Uh, I, I don't like him, man. Uh, I just don't like him. C minus. Uh, Pixneal. C, I think she's a little bit better than Elegaeus, personally. 
She has increased defense and continuous heal on allies for two turns, then attacks all enemies under freeze, debuffs, plays a weaken on enemies if they have those freezes on a three-turn cooldown, you could do a lot worse. Uh, five times that random with freeze, they also changed around her passive a little bit. She's not a great champion, but she's not trash, she's good for uh, progression, she's okay for progression. Roxum, I'll give a B plus to, very cool damage dealer, AoE, uh, he does more if he has Perfect Veil and Veil, which he has in his own kit as well. And he can deal, again, some, some pretty decent damage. Can place decreased defense and weaken as well. Uh, before attacking, plays a Perfect Veil on the champion for two turns after attacking. Pretty good. That's while attacking not under a Veil or Perfect Veil. Uh, so single target, but still very, very good ability. Uh, pretty solid champion. Countess Lix, I will give her an A. I think she's a tremendous champion. One of the stronger and more underrated champions in the game. Three-time hitter with decreased speed and tur meter uh, on the A2. And then another AoE would block active skills, decreasing the cooldown of all ally skills except this champion on the A3. Damn, man. She's so good. A, I'm tempted to even go A plus on her, man. I like her that much. Jintoro. Ventura will go with a B plus. One of my favorite damage dealers for clan boss. I have him in a relentless set and he can just be insane because we'll attack five times instead of one on this ability. The fourth time this skill is used against the same target in one round. And as you know, clan boss is only one round, you know, so you can just use this every four rounds. So the more turns, the better. Uh, all turn meter fill effects increased by 50% when used on this champion as well. So, you know, overall, what did I say? B, B plus? I think he's a good champion. Uh, we have Lady Kimmy. Man, A plus. One of the fastest champions in the game. Base stats are amazing on her. She has an AoE with decreased accuracy and speed. Uh, also turn meter de uh, depletion. And then kind of the inverse on the A3, right? We got an AoE. Uh, with removing a random buff from each enemy, with block buffs uh, for enemies who have buffs removed, and then we have increased accuracy, increased speed on the A3. Unbelievable. She's such a good champion, man. Alexander the Sharpshooter uh, will give you a C. A C. Listen, he can deal some damage, and he is decreasing enemy defense. What else do you want to know about the guy, right? Uh, Operden Clan fa Father. Listen, since I put out a guide on this champion, I'm actually coming around to thinking he's a little bit better than I gave him credit for. He's just a really good healer. Really good healer. He's, uh, you know, removing block buffs, removing heal reduction, putting more continuous heals, more continuous heals, or heals allies under continuous heals. He's all about healing. He can put out some serious heals, and I have him in Relentless Gear as well. Uh, Black Knight. So I'll give him a uh, B+. Plus. Black Knight. B+. Plus. He's got a continuous heal and increased defense on a two-turn cooldown. So alongside, uh, what's his face? Uh, why can't I iron? Iron Brago, excuse me. Uh, he's one of the only two champions in the game that can have increased defense on your allies all the time. So again, B plus on this champion. He's a little bit more one-dimensional, you know, obviously compared to Iron Brago, uh, but he's not a trash champion, in my opinion. People do think, I think there's a lot of Black Knight haters out there, I think. Skartorsis. I like Skartorsis, man. I like Skartorsis. I'm going to give Skartorsis an A-. minus. I just built him, and I'm really, really enjoying him. He's on my main Ice Golem team now uh, to keep the team alive. We're stealing buffs on the A1, on an AoE. On the A2, increase attack, increase crit rate. On the A3, we're healing and, and cleansing all allies uh, on the A3. So not a bad champion. Speed and done is by 33%. So it could be a speed lead for you guys as well. War Chief will give him a B-. I mean, he's a great provoker. My favorite provoker to have in the game, even over Ag uh, Angar, Agnar, Angar, I prefer Warchief. Uh, but he's very one-dimensional. Uh, he does have that annoying reflect when you're going against him in Doom Tower, though, right? So we'll give him a B. Uh, Bad Elkazar, A+. Plus. I love Bad Elkazar, man. Uh, we have a cleanse with continuous heals and two poisons on all enemies on the Malice ability, one of the best abilities in the game. Allies under 20% more poison, uh, or excuse me, inflict 20% more damage against allies under poison. So extra damage coming from all of your attacks as well when Bad L's on the team. I have him in a reflex set, so we can get that cooldown uh, dropped lower on the Malice ability. His only active skill that he has in his kit. Uh, Razin Scarhide. I'll give Razin a... Uh, Ooh, this is a tough one, man. He's so slow. 91. That's how I really hold against him. Otherwise, great champion. We'll give him a, a, an A-. AoE, decreased turn meter by 
<laughs> what else can you ask for, right? Deals a lot of damage too, because the damage is based off defense. We also have decreased defense and weaken. Great for bosses, debuffing bosses or clan boss on the A2. Triple hitter on the A1. Yeah, definitely A minus. I don't regret that score. Uh, Blood Gorged. Actually, like Blood Gorged, man. This guy can deal some serious damage. Has a. I haven't played around a lot. I don't have his masteries all the way done yet, but maybe a guide coming up soon. This can kill pretty much anybody, a one-shot king, and denies revival in the arena. Also has an AoE, put one of each target skills on cooldown. Not a bad ability to have here. I'll give him an A-. Shiramani! We have a great heal on uh, the A2, and an AoE freeze. 100% chance at landing with turn meter fill for each enemy attacked on this champion on the A3. I think if Shiramani is actually underrated, I really like her as a sport champion, as a freeze on the A1 as well. I'm going to give her an A-. minus. Abyss, A-. minus. She's one of my favorite nukers in the game. Decreased defense and Divine Wrath is just in the, the queen of all nukes on this ability. Very, very good damage dealer, A-. minus. Uh, Rabar, after his most recent buff, more speed, more damage, has one of the hardest hitting abilities on Merciless Assault, provided the, the enemy is under these debuffs. I'll give him an A-, minus, man. I know it's going to surprise a lot of you guys, but give him a shot. He can nuke. He can nuke him and Abyss both. Uh, next up is going to be Contra the Cyclone. A. I love Contra, man. I think she's a great champion. She has heals and and, and uh, provokes, depending on how many debuffs are on the, uh, the enemies, on the passive. And then a three-time hitter. Each hit places one of these uh, debuffs. And she's tough to kill, man. 1542 base defense. She's bringing a lot to the table. I have her in a stun set to get even more utility out of her on this AoE on the A2. Uh, I just really, really like this champion. I don't know why. I just really like her. A. Uh, Basilius Ronis. Give him a B. Uh, he used to be probably a D, but now they gave him a guaranteed stun on an AoE three a four turn ability here. 100% she is placing a stun debuff for one turn. Decrease each target's turn meter by 50% if the stun is not placed. Okay. Uh, so now him and Astralon, I think, are the only two guaranteed stun champions in the game. Not a ton of damage. They did bump up his multipliers. He does have a triple hitter with ignore defense on the A2. Damage wasn't insane from what I've you know seen in playtesting. But overall, I'll give him a B now. Elder Skarg, I'll give him a B+. Plus. This can be one of the best raw damage abilities in the game if we place the three extra hits. Potentially six uh, hits in total on this A2 ability. Uh, extra hit, uh, plays the HP burn debuff for two turns and a true fear on all enemies if this attack places all three extra hits. Uh, steals all busts from the targets after the attack, man. Hunt the marked is just a really good ability, right? Uh, so Elder Scar will give a B plus two. Vizier, A minus. This is a very unique champion. Not like a broken champion, but this A3, each hit, 35% chance, 50 when booked, of increasing the duration of all debuffs on the target by one turn. I mean, it's the best buff or debuff uh, extender in the game still on Vizier. Uh, very, very good for clan boss. Very good for Bommel. I use him on Bommel. I have him built in a high resist, as you guys can see, uh, build right now, 545 on the resist, 271 the speed. This is a very tough build to achieve. I had to use some of my best gear on my account to get it. Uh, Mountain King will give him a B minus. He's just so one dimensional, man. The highest HP in the game. You build him with a lot of HP. You can put him in a shield set on a go second arena team. Other than that, you can use him, you know, as a support and damage dealer in, uh, in faction wars. Uh, but not my favorite single target nuker in the game, but does what he does very effectively. That's why I give him a B. He can be a good arena nuker for you guys. Uh, Thea the Tomb Angel. I haven't tried her after the buff. So I reserve the right to change my mind. But right now, they reduce the cooldown of the A2 and the A3 by one turn. I'll give her a, uh, a C+, plus, but I reserve the right to bump that up depending on the damage and how she playtests. Uh, Brachus the Shifter. Brachus, man. I like this dude. Uh, I'm going to give him a B. Six-time hitter on the A2. What? Also with a great built-in heal. Uh, if they're under a fear or true fear. He has a heal on the A1 too, right? Yeah, heal on the A1. And then an, an increased attack on all allies for three turns. And a very, very hard-hitting uh, attack on a single target here. We have a chance of, of fear and true fear as well. Also has that annoying beast mode to go against. Especially when you kind of pair him with Swift Parry gear, right? Actually, I have him in Swift Parry right now. So that's, what I, that's the build that I have on this champion. Uh, fun champion to use. 
can be good for raw damage. Again, I think a B is a fair grade. Gurptuck Mossbeard is a lot better now. He's a weird legendary. He's useful in the end game, not so much in progression. Placing poison on allies, block buffs debuff on all enemies as well, which is really nice to have for Hydra. And then more damage out of the, uh, the uh, passive there if the allies are under that poison, right? So... I'll give him a B plus, actually, believe it or not. He has a cleanse also on his A2 with a shield. I haven't used Gomlock yet. Haven't used a lot of Skull Lord. I haven't built these. I built them and maxed them, but I haven't used them yet. Skull Lord, though, I think after the buff, I think he's actually a pretty solid champion to use. Not like game breaking, but Sissy of Flame Tongue, A plus. That's right, A plus on Sissia, man. She's a goddess, a beast, a monster. Uh, my favorite damage dealer in the game, really, honestly. Grants an extra turn. Uh, place an HP burn for three turns. Then grants an extra turn if it's placed on all enemies. And then comes and instantly activates the HP burns on her A2. She is just an insane damage dealer. Insane. I use her on Spider. I use her in Hydra Clan Boss. I use her, you know, in a variety of other areas. Obviously in Demon Spawn, uh, Faction Wars as well. I think the Sissy is one of my favorite, just aesthetically so cool looking as well. It's one of my favorite champions in the game. Uh, Yoshi, the Drunkard. Give him a uh, B. We have Battle Toast, which is a great uh, opening move. We have increased attack and increased accuracy on all allies and a true fear debuff on all enemies for one turn. 100% on enemies under increased attack. So a great opening move in the arena. Also has HP burn and decreased accuracy on a two-turn cooldown. So not a bad champion at all. Uh, just not like a super OP champion either. Hillier, very unique champion. A... Fairly mediocre shield here on the A2. There's nothing like miscreated monsters shield. Doesn't deal that much damage. Uh, but has this harsh light ability, which is very cool. Transfers all debuffs for, uh, from all allies to a target enemy, then attacks them. Uh, and converts his resistance to accuracy when using the skill. So you can just build him with a bunch of resistance. Uh, or you can kind of thread the needle like I'm doing. 300 resistance. So I bump it to, what, 473 resistance when using that A3? Very, very cool ability. And uh, whenever an ally that has two or more uh, debuffs is attacked, this champion will absorb 30% of the damage as well. Very, very cool champ. I'll give him an A-. minus. Noble, D, F. I'm just not a fan, man. Not a fan. It seems like he could be pretty cool with all this fear, true fear synergy. But in practicality, it just does not work that well. Uh, doesn't deal a lot of damage either. Uh, he's only good at really empowering Ninja, is my opinion. Verse off the Grim. I think Versolve is a B-plus champion, man. He has an AoE with an extra hit uh, and a leech. Uh, extra hit there under these debuffs. Not bad on three-turn cooldown. And then he has increased defense and ally protect on a three-turn cooldown. I think that Versolve the Grim got a bad rep. Uh, has good base stats. A very good support champion to have out there. I'll give him a B-plus. Blind Seer. We're into the Void Legendaries, guys. Blind Seer, B-plus. One of the fastest champions out there. 115, A-minus, A-minus. Uh, self-sacrifice is a AOE revival, but not a super strong one. 35% HP and block damage, but only for one turn. So oftentimes I find with Blind Seer, the revival goes, they get their extra turn and they die like right away. You need to have a healer kind of Johnny on the spot to come back around and keep them alive. That's my only knock on Blind Seer. Otherwise, a tremendous champion. Block debuffs and a shield on the A2. Turn meter depletion on the A1. Uh, and one of the best defensive auras in the game. Defense in all battles by 34%. Yeah, now that I reread the kit, yeah, sure. The, the rev revival isn't the best, but the entire kit is very good. I'm going to give it bump it to an A instead. Baron B+. Plus. Sky Pairs are still one of the best abilities in terms of raw damage in the game. Two hard-hitting single-target attacks uh, on the A2 and the A3. Uh, three. And then Trample has insane surplus damage. We're talking like a Dracomorph-esque on the A1. Great for speed runs. Has attack in all battles aura by 33%. So I like Baron. Uh, still a little bit one-dimensional, but I like him in terms of raw damage. Uh, Warlord, A+. Definitely one of the better support champions and, well... It's hard to even call him support. He's just like everything champion, right? Shield, block debuffs. Uh, also an AoE attack with all skills on cooldown and turn meter depletion. What? Very, very insanely good champion. We have Ethos. We get tons of damage. A. I mean, if you're looking for a nuker, look no further. You got Ethos. Uh, a lot of damage on all these AoE attacks that he has. Three-time hitter on the A2. Uh, Angar, 
I mentioned it earlier, I like Warchief a little bit better, but he's a great provoker, right? An AoE provoke as opposed to a single target, so it depends on where you're using them, right? Want an AoE nuke, uh, provoker? Agnar's, uh, Angar, excuse me, Agnar? Angar's better. But personally, I'm just not a massive fan. I guess a B is fine. Not a bad champion, I just don't use him. I think I have better options for provokers, and I don't really have an area where I really need somebody with an AoE provoke and a provoke on the A1, right? Uh, Solus, I'll give a B plus to. The best defensive-based nuker in the game. I love that they buffed his speed as well. They also uh, meddled with his base defense and his multipliers. End result, he's just an absolute beast of a nuker here on this Reign of Terror ability, even on the Wave of Despair ability. Uh, Aura is great for Faction Wars as well. Great defensive-based nuker, especially for the arena, right? On a go-second team or even a go-first team. Uh, Turvold. He's my favorite ally attack champion uh, for damage off of this A1 personally. So I will give him a B plus, A minus. I'll give him an A minus. I just really like Turvold. Uh, just great at raw damage. Has a self buff on the A2 as well. We have Gurgo the Augur. Gurgo is cool because he's bone chiller. He opens up with this move. Uh, two random buffs from all enemies removing. 100% freeze when booked. And then grants an extra turn and comes back in with his avalanche and kills somebody, right? Extra hit if they have freeze, which they do because we open with the bone shiller and we got an extra turn out of it. Uh, also, 50% chance of placing freeze on the attacker. Uh, I'll give him an A. Very good champion. Very cool champion. Krajaxa. A minus. She's a great single target nuker, especially for the arena and great on ally attack teams as well. She's a four time hitter on her A1. But in the arena, you can come in with A2, kill almost anybody with this ability and grant an extra turn, come back in and kill almost anybody else with the A1. Doesn't hit as hard, obviously, as the A2, but you can kill a champion like, like Rotos, right? Because it's hitting four times on this A1. Uh, Sir Nick, I'll give him a B plus, A minus? A minus, I guess. He has a great shield. He deals great damage. And he has unkillable and continuous heal. What else do you want from a champion, right? Uh, good aura as well. Uh, yeah, B plus. I mean, A minus, A minus. I don't know, A minus. Venus, A plus. Man, I love Venus. Some people don't like Venus. I don't even know why don't you like Venus. She's amazing. Every time I mention Venus and I and, and how much I love her, there's some people in the comments that are like, "Ah, Venus overrated." Are you crazy, bro? Uh a lot of base speed, a ton of base HP. She has a, if she's on the same team as Cupidus, removes all buffs from all enemies, and then grants an extra turn, 50% chance. AoE HP burn that deals a lot of damage. AoE decreased defense and weaken that deals a decent amount of damage. And then a hard-hitting A1 with poison. What? She's like a debuffer who deals insane damage, especially in longer battles. Hydra clan boss. I love Venus. A+. plus. Arbiter. A... Plus? A? A plus? A plus. Uh, still one of the best speed auras in the game for the arena. Uh, AoE revival with turn meter boost. More turn meter boost. Granted extra turn. AoE decreased the cooldown of enemy buffs. She does it all, man. A great arena lead, but a great uh, reviver. Just overall, anywhere in the game, right? Uh, Krisk, A plus. One of the best champions in the game. I would personally put him as number one or one A uh, behind uh, Lydia or alongside Lydia. Uh... Just an amazing champion, guys. What can I say? Uh, extending uh, all uh, buffs on all allies. We get ally protect. We get continuous heal on himself. We have provoke on all enemies. We got increased defense on himself. We have increased speed on all allies. We have a shield at the beginning of each turn. We have a chance of placing decreased defense and attack every time he's hit. We got decreased speed on the A1. Good God, you're a boss. You're a beast, Krisk. Whirlum Frost King, A. So A plus, obviously, on Krisk. A minus. No, screw that. A on Wordland Frost King. He's a great champion. One of the best Noom Tower auras in the game. We have increased defense and strengthen on a three-turn cooldown. What? That's incredibly good ability here, guys. You can't ask for more damage mitigation on a single ability than this unless you want to throw, like, ally protect on the same ability. Uh, we have an AoE, decrease crit damage, decrease accuracy, cannot be resisted, so mitigating even more uh, damage onto our allies and then increase crit damage on all our allies and a freeze on the a1 man this guy's in a perfect veil on the alloy lowest hp or a veil on the alloy lowest hp uh man i really 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 like whirlwind frost king now he was the battle pass champion uh torment the cold a plus 
One of the best defensive auras in the game, 33% everywhere. AoE on the A1, AoE on the A3. Uh, he has a block buffs. He has a uh, provoke chance. He has another freeze chance. He has an instant activation potential on the A1. He has the annoying wintry wind ability. Uh, keeps him coming back alive. It's uh, freezing all the allies whenever they're getting buffs and having turn meters filled. He's a nuisance in the arena. He's great everywhere in the game. I love Torment the Cold. A++++ plus 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 to Lydia the Death Siren. I am an insanely big fan of Lydia. You guys can read the A1. I'm not going to. On the A2, we get AoE decrease defense, decrease, uh, or weaken, excuse me, and strengthen and increase speed on a three-turn cooldown with the most unique kind of revival passive in the game. Denies revival, revives your own team instead. A+, plus. I think she's a, an amazing champion. Siffy A... I guess A, uh, a sleep that can't be resisted, awesome for the arena, a heal, we have uh, block debuffs, increased defense, and increased speed on a four turn, now listen, she was A++, one of the best champions in the game, she still is one of the best champions in the game, uh, but when it's a three turn cooldown, anybody remember that? It used to be three turn cooldown on this ability, man oh man, uh, four turn is still great, but it just puts her, you know, as a very good champion, not like, okay, she's broken. Uh, a great revival on a four turn cooldown as well. Full turn meter, right? Uh, so overall, I love, love, love Siffy A or A+. Plus. Uh, Coronar. Give him a B plus. I like Kornar a lot. He's great for turn meter control. He's attacking all the time on the A1, reducing turn meter because he's putting a counterattack or is counterattacking when hit by enemies under decrease attack, defense, and speed. Uh, he has that in his kit as well here on his A3 uh, defense and attack, that is. He also has a provoke. So B plus, I really like the champion. Uh, I'll give Uros a soul cage an A minus. Great champion. A Doom Tower secret room, hard. Second thing, the second champion, uh, putting poisons every time he's hit, uh, strengthen, ally protect, can solo like half the Doom Tower bosses. I really like this dude. At first, I didn't like him that much, but in a regen set, man, he's like a solo god. He's a solo god, right? A lot of HP and regen and immortal is all you need on this champion. Uh, we get Vizix A. That's right, I said it. I have two Vizix. I don't know why, but I do. Uh, I have one in Bloodthirst and I have one in Lifesteal because she's tough to keep alive now because she has an AoE ally protect, decrease speed, and provoke. So she's provoking and ally protecting in the same kit on three turn cooldowns. She's dealing a lot of damage. She's taking a ton of damage as well, but you know, she's great now. She's great. Decrease speed, 100% chance, ally protect, provoke guaranteed with a shield as well. I think she's a great champion, guys. I really do. Uh, Ursica Warcaller, another A. Uh, we have Ally Protect. We have Strength. And we have Damage Mitigation built into her passive. We have kind of a nice debuff on the A2. We have Block Active Skills on the A1. Uh, great base stats as well. Ton of HP, ton of defense, and a ton of speed too, man. Great champion. Little Miss Annie will give her a B+. Personally, I have a soft spot for her because I think she's freaky as all hell, and I love her. Uh, she can kill almost anybody with the play date ability on the A3. Uh, that's really all you need to know about her. But when she's revived, I guess, she comes back in and tries to get revenge on anybody who killed her. She comes back in and attacks them with her hard-hitting A1 three-time hitter. Uh, she's a unique single-target champion that I really, really like. So, B+. You can also use her on uh, in the arena with a play date or on ally attack teams with this hard-hitting A1 on the triple hitter, right? Uh, your Carl the, Scour the Scourge. Ugh, D. I really a hater on this dude, man. I really am. Single target, single target, single target. Nukes, I don't know, man. Has synergy with Freeze. Maybe I'm being a little bit too hard. Maybe C minus. He can put out a decent amount of damage, but I'm just not feeling him, man. Uh, Rio Bone Spear. There is a champion. A plus. An amazing champion. She has every debuff known to man on the A2. On the A3, a cleanse. Block debuffs for two turns and a heal. All on a three-turn cooldown. Wow. Her kit is so nasty, man. Uh, when receiving any debuff, she instantly transfers them back to the attacker, too. <laughs> Why not, right? Uh, I love Rio Bone Spear. Tamisia. Uh, Tamisia is a champion I need to play around with a little bit more. I'm going to give her an A-minus 
She can be a great, one of the best damage dealers out there and great synergy. She has decreased speed or a stun on the A2, on an AoE attack as well. Also with an HP burn, I don't know, maybe even an A on this champion. A ton of damage too from the Burning Regret A3 ability. Uh, Leo! My favorite arena nuker is a little one-dimensional, kinda. You can use him in Hydra. You can use him really anywhere if you can keep him alive. Uh, very hard-hitting, awesome roar ability. He has the unkillable a la Skullcrown as well. Did I skip Skullcrown? I think I did. Uh, we also have the Rage of the Pride on the A2. Uh, if this ability is not on cooldown, he's immune to CC, which is great. So I give him an A. Uh, really, really love Leo. Vlad? I like a lot more than Constantine. They're companion champions. Vlad was a letdown for a Void champion as part of a Fragment Summon, but overall, he's not awful. He can put out a decent amount of damage. He has an AoE Leech that he brings to the table, and then he can uh, place decreased defense and block active skills on a single target on his A3. He also has a Revive on Death. Anytime he kills an enemy, fully heals his champion and fills a turn meter every time an, uh, they kill an enemy as well uh, when he's with Constantine. So for the heal part of that, the Revive on Death will work either way. So I think he's probably a B minus. I don't think he's a trash champion, but he's not like, you know, worthy of the Void Legendary status. All right, before we jump, uh, continue here. Did I forget? I think I just skipped over Skullcrown and Maneater. Wow, weird. Well, don't you worry. We've got it. People who were watching an hour ago, they missed out. <laughs> so, <laughs> Skullcrown is an A. A. Uh, two hard-hitting AoE attacks. And then the most annoying, unkillable passive uh, as well. Great in a stun set. I use her mainly in PvE content. But great in the arena. She has a great arena lead aura as well in A. Same thing with Maneater. A for Maneater. Uh... <laughs> The unkillable meta god right now with unkillable and block of debuffs uh, on a five turn cooldown here on Ancient Blood. Also, as an AoE decrease attack on his A1 and uh, fully depletes target's turn meter and fills this target's turn meter by the amount the target loses on the siphon ability, man. He's bringing a lot to the table there. A lot to the table. Did I miss anybody else? I don't think so. All right. Back to the legendaries, the void legendaries. We're home stretch, guys. Constantine the Dayborn. We're going to give him a big fat D. He can put out some damage. An AoE times two hitter. We'll ignore a little bit of defense. But not a, a decent amount of damage. Maybe I'm being too hard. Maybe C minus. But he's just a damage dealer. They're a dime a dozen. Definitely not worthy to be a void legendary in my opinion. Kind of a trash champion, honestly, guys. I did a guide on him if you want to see it, though. Duchess A+. Plus. One of the top five champions in the game. Block debuffs, an increase attack, perfect veil. Thank you very much. One of the better revivals in the game. AoE revival on a four turn cooldown with a veil and continuous heal. Also decreases damage taken by AoE attacks by 25%. Wow, 15 from bosses. And then an aura speed and all battles, 19%. Shield on the A1 too, amazing. A plus on Brogni as well. These are my empowered champions. I was so lucky, so fortunate to pull Brogni. I love this dude, man. An AoE attack with removing a random buff, improving shields, removing a debuff from allies, putting a shield on the A3, increase attack, block debuffs, a bunch of damage out of the passive as well, HP burn on the A1. Are you kidding me? A+. plus Ninja, A+. plus plus Ninja is my favorite Damage dealer against bosses inside the entire game, bar none. I feel bad for you guys who just started playing are never going to get your hands on him, started to rub it in. I love Ninja, man. I love Ninja. So good on longer battles, too, because of this Escalation passive. I run him in Relentless, and I love a Relentless set on Ninja. Uh, Raglan, A+. Plus. A plus. Turn meter fill on the A1. We get a cleanse on the A2 with a heal on a four turn cooldown. And then we have a miracle. Revive an ally on a two turn cooldown. Thank you very much. Defense and all battles by 33%. Best in the game. Uh, yeah, love you, Raglan. She's an insane, uh, insanely good support champion. And Nithwi Blood Twin, C, C. I'm just not a big fan of Nithwi, man. I know you guys give me grief about it, but I gotta be honest with you guys. You don't want me to sit here and lie and just say everybody's a beast, right? Uh, for a champion that has the highest base attack in the game, or, or second highest, 1729, he does not hit that hard. He has a really cool passive. He has a heal and block enemy revival uh, anytime he kills an enemy. Unfortunately, 
He has an AoE leech that does not have big multipliers on it. Very low multipliers on this torment tormenting whispers. And no mercy can kill an enemy, but I want to see more damage out of this champion to justify that passive, you know? I don't really use him anywhere in the game. Can be all right in, you know, Fire Knight, or excuse me, uh, Ice Golem. Uh, but overall, I'm just not a big fan. Can be used in the arena if you have godlike gear as well. Necro the Great A++ has ally attack, has ally protect, has amazing passives, block debuff, strengthen, and ally protect for six turns at the beginning of turn of each round on the ally with lowest HP. That's a great for the arena, but he's really great anywhere. Really love Necrot the Great, man. What a beast champion. We have Ray, AoE, AoE, AoE attack with a freeze as well. 70% chance of land uh, landing that and removing all buffs. She's the best raw sheer damage dealer in the game, according to Ash's Voyager uh, spreadsheet. And uh, she's just a boss. I'll give her a B plus, maybe a... Maybe an A minus. I think A minus on this champion. I like Biggin a little bit better because of that molten slag. Uh, I find him to put out a little bit more damage, but it really depends, you know, on uh, on who you're attacking and what you're doing. So uh, Ray overall, though, a very very good champion. Drexstar Blood Twin, surprise, surprise, A+. Plus. I really like Drexstar, man. Just a very, very good champion. Uh, great against bosses. HP burn on the passive. Put him in lifesteal, and he can basically solo a lot of the Doom Tower bosses once you get to the boss. And the heal on this A1 is just insane as well. A+. Plus. Uh, more to Macabre. I'm going to give him a B plus, guys. It might shock some of you guys. Peril is a nasty ability. Uh, can pretty much one-shot anybody and block revive if you unlock it, right? Uh, he has aura, speed and all battles 24%. The best all battles aura for speed in the game. And then an AoE times two hitter with block buffs. Block buffs is really good to have in the game right now, guys. You can do a lot worse than Mortu Macab. He's actually grown on me quite a bit. I used to not like him that much. Now I really like the champion. Karela Witch Arm. One of the best uh, ally attack champions in the game. We have three allies joining on a three-turn cooldown with a stun on an enemy on that A2. That's what's, what makes her unique compared to the other ally attack champions in the game, right? We are placing a stun, but it's on a three-turn cooldown. Other ally attacks, four-turn cooldown, right? We also have an AoE increase crit rate, increase uh, attack as well with an attack uh, on all enemies on that. I really like Creela Witch Arm. We'll give her an A. Uh, Tomb Lord, A. I mean, I can't believe they buffed him. Very good champion. We're placing a bunch of poisons on the A2. Uh, we have four poisons, right, on all enemies for two turns. What? Uh, we also have a uh, decreased speed on the A1. F screw that. I'm going to be an A+, plus, man. A+. Plus. Three-time hitter with decreased speed on the A1. And then we have turn meter with decreased attack and defense on the A2. A3, uh, excuse me. Wow, man. A very, very, very good uh, champion. They changed his aura accuracy in Doom Tower Pals by 70. I have him on a solo build right now. Immortal in regen, so he can solo anywhere in the game. Check out my last Tomb Lord video to watch him soloing in several different areas. Uh, we have Mashald. Mashald, A++. I love Mashald. Uh, I don't really like the open wounds ability that much, although he does have a nice like self heal there on his A3. Sometimes I shut it off, especially against uh, Hydra Clan boss, and I just tornado. Uh, increased speed, increased crit damage, true fear and fear on all enemies, grant an extra turn, and then more blood suckers. AoE attack on enemies under leech. Uh, can basically heal himself just off of that A1, right? Uh, Nethril A. A. Triple hitter with poison on the A1, AoE stun on the A2, AoE turn meter reduction by 75% on the A3. I think Nethrel is underrated by a lot of players out there in the game. This guy's a very, very good champion overall. He does a lot, even outside of just, you know, clan boss, right? Uh, so my last champion is Fushan. Fushan, A minus. He's a really good nuker, guys. He also has a great speed or a speed and all battles again by 24%. Four-time hitter with decreased defense. Good for bosses on the A3. And then an AoE. It mirrors so the Drake's A2 ability with that AoE stun. 35% chance on the A2. Only difference is insane uh, damage out of Fushan. Not the heaviest nuker that I have on my entire account, but reliable, consistent, force affinity, 
big, big damage from this nuker. I'm a big fan of uh, Fushan overall in the game. And there it is, guys. That is grading every champion I've ever maxed inside the entire game. Man, we went really, really, really long in this video. I tried to trim it down, but it didn't really work, did it, guys? Well, either way, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this list, this uh, grading. And as always, take care, guys.